Welcome back. Let's talk about filament and how to get the most out of the render engine and get you some, you know, handsome looking previews while you're working, while you're setting up your scenes that look, in my opinion, a little bit better than the texture shaded view. Know that you can always go back to the texture shaded view if filament isn't working for you. But if you're interested in it, listen closely and experiment along with me. So I have loaded in the 1920 City Street and I've switched over to my scene navigator and I can go and wander around in the scene. And this is what it looks like. It's basically built like a film set and it's, it's quite nice. I've been planning to make a scene or a couple of renders with that for a while, but I haven't had a chance yet. So we're outdoors. That's important to remember. There's basically, this is the sky. I'm using the default HDRI image that comes with Das Studio. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. We're going to speak more about HDRIs in an upcoming video in the lighting section of this course. But for now, I can see pretty much everything in more or less accuracy. However, it looks a little bit blown out and a bit too bright for me. Because if I go and switch this over now to iRay, which shows me what my actual picture is going to look like later, I will see that after a little pause here, I will see that it looks much darker with or without the skies or anything that's gray here that's going to be rendered in transparency later. And there we go. This looks more like an accurate picture. But if I go and look at the filament version of it, it looks a little bit more blown out and it doesn't have the contrast and it might be difficult to put my figures in there. I mean, too bright is better than too dark. At least we see something, but there's room for improvement. I think that's what I'd like to, that's the point I'm trying to make. Let me show you another little feature about viewports here and that we haven't touched on. We can work with more than one viewport at the same time. I'm going to go and pick this one here, top and bottom. And when I do that, my viewport literally splits in half. This here at the top, that's set to iRay in my perspective view. The bottom one is set to also the perspective view, but a different render engine, like in my case, filament. So the glaringly obvious issue here is that this one is too bright, but this one is kind of my reference. So this is what my final image is going to look like. But this one here at the bottom is what filament renders right now. This is so complicated because all these properties and all these objects and the light and all that, that is all made for iRay really. And this translates all these values from iRay into something that filament understands and we don't have to really worry about it it just happens on the fly but it, it's important to remember that one shader doesn't work with two render engines one shader only works with one render engine and if you had a second render engine you need to write another shader thankfully das studio takes care of this under the hood we don't have to worry but the lighting is something it lets us well it lets us help it translate it properly i think that's the best way I can put it. And this is done with something called a filament draw options node. Right now, I don't have one in my scene. I have two other things in my scene that have just smuggled themselves in here. And this happens when you switch your viewport over to iRay. These two things automatically appear. But the third one that we need to teach filament what our HDRI is supposed to look like, that isn't in the viewport. So if I head over here to create and at the very bottom, I can see new filament draw options node. I can, you know, select that. And then I get to see, well, I get some values here. I just leave the defaults, hit accept. And then I have a filament draw options node in my viewport. And with it selected, I can head over to the parameters tab. And don't worry, you only have to do this once if you're clever. Uh, it's good to know about this. With it selected on the parameters tab, you can see various options here. So one of them under environment there's this here, the environment intensity scale. And that by default is set to 15,000. And that is a little bright in my opinion. But, you know, that's that's the default value. Nothing we can do about it. We can, however, adjust it. And if I make that lower, then watch what happens in the bottom viewport. My filament drawn picture becomes darker. I, if I make it, you know, if I go to zero, then of course it'll make it basically pitch black. But if I turn it to something kind of in between and I'm, you know, it's kind of personal preference here. Keep an eye on both the iRay viewport and the filament viewport and see which value for a certain scene floats your boat. So I'm thinking I'm almost there with about maybe say 5,000. Those look much more as if they were the same now. So this I can live with. This is just a small, maybe it's kind of 6,000. Let's try 6,000. 
in the intensity scale. That's kind of there, isn't it? So intensity scale from 15,000 down to 6,000, that's like a third of what it was before. And that looks more like my iRay viewport now. But because it's the same viewport, look what happens if I go and left click and drag in the viewport now. I can go and move them, whereas filament moves immediately and shows me a result immediately. iRay still struggles and needs to kind of catch up and calculate things. Same with I when I go and walk around my set, I can see an immediate preview with filament that is also fairly accurate. But my iRay viewport still struggles and, you know, has to catch up while it's calculating. So while we place things on top of one another, this is a really nice thing to use. Now, intensity scale for the environment is one thing to set up because this essentially translates how the HDRI lighting is supposed to arrive in filament. But there's two other things here. There's one for the scene light scale and the distance scene light scale. Those are two types of lights we're going to learn about later. Just know that if I had a light source in my image that is a parametric light source, I can adjust that independently of the environment scale. So we'll talk about that later when we talk about lights more. Then I'll tell you more about how to do this and what the best value to adjust this is. There's just one other thing I'd like you to be aware of in filament, and that is that it will translate the HDRI, like the outside light, but it'll also show that on the inside of rooms. It sounds a little crazy, but like this here is kind of a closed off room. If I go in there now, then I shouldn't really be seeing anything because light doesn't really reach in there. Let's go into here. This is kind of a room with nothing shining through the windows because they just, you know, they're boarded up. In the top view, I get a very accurate representation of that because there's no light in here and iRay doesn't render anything as a result. But at the bottom, I still see the full effect of the HDRI. So it's a small limitation of filament that you just need to be aware of. If you're anywhere inside, filament will still show you that there is light around and at that point you may have to go and fiddle with that value so like for example if i were to be if i'm behind something that actually has windows that are not boarded up maybe you know maybe in here just as an example are these windows here Yes. So we can see light shining through these windows. And as a result, it's darker in here. But this light still illuminates this room, whereas filament's going to say, nope, it's a full whack in here. So that's kind of why you have this adjustability. If we were to use the HDRI on the outside and we wanted to build a scene in here, then you can go ahead and still turn this down. Just remember 6,000 is good for outdoors. If you go and turn this down to something like, I don't know, maybe a thousand or something, just something that looks approximately like your iRay viewport, that you have a similar kind of mood here. That is why you can do that. That's why this filament draw options node is really helpful. Adjust it depending on what you need in your scene and have a look at two viewports and just set filament up so that it looks like the iRay scene that you're building and then switch iRay off, work with filament until you're ready and then switch over to an iRay preview just so that I can see what this looks like in the final render. That's really all I wanted to share with you. This is how I work all the time and it works really well for me. Oh, actually, there's one other thing. If you were to work a lot with outdoor scenes like this one here, and you've worked out that for this scene, the environment intensity scale on the filament draw options node is, say, 6000. You can go ahead and just make a blank scene and save that as your default scene that loads in whenever Dash Studio starts or when you create a new scene. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go over here to File, New, what happens is it'll ask me, would you like to save your scene? I'm going to say no. I'm just going to let it create a brand new scene. What happens in my case is that aside from the two tone mapper things here, the environment and the tone mapper options, uh, they're not going to happen if I go and switch this over to filament. Let me just, I'm sorry. Let me just go and put this into a single viewport here and let's do this again. I go file new and I'm not going to save anything. So I'm okay with that. Then a new scene is launched but look i already have a filament draw options node in here and it is already set to 6000 because i use this all the time i find that really helpful to do this i have the same with the render settings so in this scene there's also certain render settings that i prefer and it's just something 
to know about that as you get to work with Dash Studio and you have your favorites that you want to save and you want them to come up all the time whenever you start Dash Studio or when you say you create a new scene, then Dash Studio can load that scene in and just bring your favorites all back. So by favorites, I mean settings like, you know, do I have a particular character camera in there? Do I have a particular light set in there? Do I have my Genesis figure preloaded in the center? Do I have a certain studio set up? That sort of thing. I want to quickly show you how to do that because it's kind of related to filament and since it's such an important thing you know let's let's just get on with that I've made myself that filament draw options node under create new filament draw options node I've added this setting here 6000 on the environment intensity scale scene lights they're kind of about 1.5 it really depends I can now go ahead and save that scene somewhere so file, save as. We're going to talk more about how saving works and what types of scenes you can save out here. Just go with scene for now and put it into a particular place. I'm going to put mine on the desktop, but you know, you shouldn't really do that. You should put it in a safe place, like in your documents directory, in a Dropbox or in a OneDrive or some kind of cloud storage folder that is always accessible for you. Something that you don't easily wipe out, like where important documents go. Save it there and name it something that you can remember. So I'm going to call it default scene, for example. Hit save. That will save the scene. And now, magic, magic, head over to edit, preferences. And then we head over to startup. So there's these two, startup and scene. And this one here, startup on launch, you can load a file. And this is usually set to none. But if we go and browse there, then we can go and specify the scene we've just saved. So mine was on the desktop. This is it, the default scene. I can go ahead and open that now. And then it doesn't actually open. It just goes and lets Dash Studio remember that, hey, if we start Dash Studio up, this is going to be loaded automatically with all the settings that I've set on the render settings tab, anything that's in my scene tab, all of that will be rendered. And I can do the same thing over here under the scene option. And scene does exactly the same thing. But it'll do this, it'll load the scene now when you head over to File, New. That's when this is loaded. So you could have two different scenes if you want to do that. Startup is the one that gets loaded when you launch Dash Studio for the first time. Or after closing it down, when you launch it, then this is being loaded. And under Scene, then this thing is being loaded here. Can be the same scene. I've used my same scene for that. And then you have your adjusted filament settings if you use them often, you know, right when you create a new scene. And I wanted to share that with you because it's an often overlooked looked feature you just hit apply and accept and then you know that'll take care of that next time you load Dash studio it'll remember those settings i just wanted to share that with you at this point even though we've already talked a lot about other things that might not make all that much sense but they will do in due course so i just wanted to let you know this at the kind of beginning of the course before we get started so that whenever you launch a new scene you have your favorite settings right there right then in the next episode, we're going to talk about the scene tab and its intricacies, how to make things visible and invisible, how to build groups and hierarchies. Join me for that.